Good afternoon and welcome to the Patty Graphite PLC Corporate Update Q&A session. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted any time by the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Just click Q&A, scroll to the bottom, type your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself due to the number of attendees today. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to Shashir Podder, Executive Chairman and Peruvi Podder, Chief of Corporate and Business Development. Good afternoon. Very good afternoon, Paul. Uh, thanks for uh, bringing us close to our shareholders. Uh, a very warm welcome to all our shareholders to this uh, webinar. Uh, thanks a lot for being, uh, uh, you know, a part of our journey. And uh, thanks a lot for joining this uh, Q&A session. Thanks also for uh, putting us uh, together the questions that you pre-submitted. Since uh, many questions that we had were related to key topics, what we thought what would be best was that we provide you a full update on these key topics. And that would answer most of your questions. And if there is any left, please do send it in the Q&A tab and we will try to answer as much as we can, time permitting. If anything is left, we will endeavor to answer you back by email or otherwise. With this, uh, let me proceed providing you an update on each of the aspects of the business of the company. Can I have the next slide, Purvi? As you all are aware, our flagship projects are in Madagascar, which are for producing flake graphite. And Madagascar has one of the finest flake graphite deposits in the world. Our journey of developing the Madagascan projects started just a few years back. We got listed in December 2020 in the midst of very hard times for the globe. Since then, only about 18 months have passed. And in these 18 months, as a team, your company's team has been working hard day and night to evolve this company into what we envision it to be. Yes, obviously, there have been glitches. There have been roadblocks that we come across. And each one of them we don't only look at as a roadblock that we need to traverse, but also an opportunity to learn and evolve our solutions so that such roadblocks do not come in our way in future. In the last month, we did announce certain difficulties that we faced over the last six months in relation to our Madagascan developments. That prompted us to think aloud and find solutions that could be very valuable for the company and its future developments. Thus, from the possibility of trying to build almost 50 kilometers of road, which could have cost quite a huge amount of money, we started thinking on what the alternatives could be. And that's the solution that evolved and we announced this morning. It's very innovative. It's very conducive to our commitment towards being sustainable on a continued basis and towards me going to a zero uh, emission goal that we've set in our first sustainability report that was released last year. This solution helps us possibly completely eliminate all the load of transporting ore from the mine pithead to the processing plant, which is located in non-mineralized zones, uh, and obviously uh, for good reasons. What we worked out is let's put the first leg of our processing plant at the pithead. You know, there, there's a hill. Madagascar has completely undulating terrains. There are hills, and these hills contain graphite. We're mining from the top of the hill. At the base or near the base, we set up a pre-concentrate plant. There's direct flow of raw material from the mine area into the plant. And the pre-concentrate itself eliminates 80 to 90% of the impurities that the ore contains. 
volume wise if you see at 5% rate assumption 80 to 90% of the impurities would mean almost uh, you know uh, 90 tons out of 100 of all that we would have otherwise uh, you know fed in our plant uh, at the final concentration level this also gave us the opportunity to innovate on how we can transport the pre-concentrate to the main processing plant where you, we make these high-grade graphite. And we decided to add slurry pumps to the system. You know, a pithead could be about anywhere ranging from one to three kilometers from the uh, process, main processing plant. And we lay the pipelines, which we already have. We just shift the equipment that we will already have. Nothing new required. Just shift the pre-concentrate, put the ore in that, concentrate it to a level where you reduce the solids by about 80 to 90 percent, pump that to the main plant, process it, and you know, uh, get to the finished product that you have. This has led to us being able to relook at how we develop the road infrastructure. Coming to the next part of our uh, you know, evolution of our Madagascan projects. 30,000 tons of graphite production is a very significant capacity. There would be only a few companies uh, which would be at that level globally outside China. Possibly we would be third uh, on that. Since our listing, we have prioritizing developing our projects in Madagascar. The 9,000 tons plant in Vatumina was set up, it was commissioned, it has been debottlenecked. It is now ramping up. And the last bit of, bit of hitch that we uh, saw is getting covered in end of June. Simultaneously, we started building the 18,000 ton plant at Sahamami. By the end of this quarter, that takes us to a very significant 30,000 tons capacity. With the new innovations, we will be able to utilize this capacity even better. Thus, the company comes in a very significant position of being able to produce enough so that it doesn't e only meet all its costs, including corporate costs, but has a positive bottom line. In the journey of a mining company at an age of just two, one and a half years of listing and possibly four years of existence, I can say you will all agree that this is a very big achievement. Yes, we always set very low, tall targets for us. That has helped us to do things in lesser time and also at lesser investments. You pick up any graphite developing company, none of them have a projected capex of less than a, a thousand to a fifteen hundred dollars per ton of annual, annual capacity creation. Here we are. We are creating at a fraction of that. With this, I think uh, uh, you will all be satisfied that your company is doing what it should. Yes, there could be bumps on the road. We are conscious of them and we are traversing them to success. Purvi, can we go to the next point? There have been a lot of questions on where are we placed on our financing and trading position. Let me give a bit of background of our 18 months history. We have raised equity capital, totaling about 16 million pounds in gross proceeds. It's been 18 months and as a listed entity, you do have an increment in your corporate costs. While we are building capacities, obviously, it takes some time for us to come in a position that the company becomes an earning company. Till that time, there is a negative bottom line, which we have to fund It's part of basic financing. Of the 16 million pounds of gross proceeds, my friends, we have built 27,000 tons of additional capacity. The last bit is in I mean, all the equipments for Madagascar are in, uh, the mine opening has been done. I mean, we, we are just completing that. Just consider 
we have used a substantial portion of these 16 million pounds in building our projects in Madagascar. Even with this, if you take any benchmark, a 27,000 tons graphite capacity would have mean, meant much more of investment. We have still and will continue to be very prudent in our cost structure. And that is what is our strength. We will continue to be very fast and bring the company to a green bottom line. And that is what insulates us from financial risks. On our trading position, yes, the last six months, as we announced, had not been great, thanks to certain external factors. With the changes that we have made now and that we brought out today, by end of July, we will be able to be in a position that our existing 12,000 tons capacity can be substantially utilized in production from the following month. Furthermore, with the 30,000 tons capacity reach with the 18 build, we will reach a position that we will be able to ramp it up in the next quarter and substantially reach the target nameplate capacity from the next. All this put together, it does give us a lot of leverage on our finances. Please rest assured, this is a specific assurance I'm giving to all our shareholders. TG will never raise equity at share price, which it doesn't find prudent for its equity value. We had a lot of questions around this. I'm sure this will give you comfort on the way we look at things. We will explore all options, but never do anything that is not in the interest of our company and our shareholders, or which is not value justifiable. Uh, with this, I would now like to turn to the next point, major point. Uh, Purvi, can you switch to the next slide? The downstream graphite processing, advanced materials, and the acquisition completion of TSG is an integral part of our business plan. We did make an announcement recently, which talked about certain issues, or uh, uh, I would call that also as road bumps, that we have come across in the process of taking it forward. Let me first talk about the opportunity that the market provides today. The green energy economy is something which is the most vital part of evolution of businesses in the world. While our jurisdiction, the United Kingdom, has been a front runner in setting targets to net zero. And this has led to policy measures by the government of UK to facilitate green energy economy in country. With this, you see evolution of battery manufacturing happening in the UK, also of electric vehicles. Simultaneously, countries in the Europe are also progressing these policies. In addition, it's also in the other parts of the world. So the evolution of markets on the downstream process graphite, which not only go in electric vehicles in the form of batteries, but also in many other applications which are close to the green economy, is global. It is happening in the entire world. We see this as our opportunity. As a benchmark, as uh, I have said earlier, we see TG to be a company that should be more or less providing the world 8% of its graphite needs. The markets are evolving and are expected to reach anywhere between five to six million tons of graphite consumption by 2030. The growth is more in the downstream 
than in the upstream graphite consumption. So this opportunity is something that we as a company will continue to seize. I feel there has been a misconception that the deal that the company has for acquisition of TSG has fallen. Let me clearly say this is not the case. There are regulations which every nation has to protect its interests. Similarly, there are regulations in India on how an Indian company can be acquired by a company outside India. There are issues in relation to these regulations which we are working through. However, the opportunity that the downstream brings is something that we do not want to lose time on. So while we are traversing the journey to see how we can complete this acquisition, it is prudent and it is in the interest of the company and its shareholders that we simultaneously look at alternatives that we can work on. It is this that we brought out in the recent announcement in this relation so that, you know, we, we keep you aware as our shareholders of where we stand in something that is important for the company. This also provides us a path by which we can have wider consultation on alternatives that we can work on. While we continue to pursue the completion of acquisition, yes, there are issues in relation to valuations. Time has passed and, you know, uh, both TSG and TG have evolved. So we will continue to work on that. And in the interim, we will try to work out alternatives so that we can make the most of this opportunity. As you are aware, we have been liaising with the government in uh, UK to find favor for favorable policy for a possible downstream graphite uh, setup in the UK. Simultaneously, UK is the hub of graphene. It's the marketplace of graphene. We would like to set up a graphene entity also in the United Kingdom. So we are looking at possibilities and we will continue our consultations with our shareholders and find solutions which are prudent, which retain every aspect of the development of business of TG as we have envisioned, and we will push forward the entire process relentlessly and to success. I can also share with you, my friends, that the independent members on the board have exercised all their prudence, have independently verified every aspect of this transaction and are working to get to solutions which will be value accretive, which will be prudent and which will meet the interests of all concerned. If there is any question around this which may have got missed in uh, this update, we will specifically answer that separately time permitting, uh, if we miss something, we will do it, uh, you know, post this webinar. Puri, can we go to the next slide, slide, please? As I said some time back, we look at TG as being a company which more or less provides 8% of the global graphite demand. The demand, as I also said, is expected to reach a 5 million tons size from its current 1.3 to 1.5 million. That's a three, three and a half fold increase. Our Madagascan assets have been planned to reach an 84,000 ton capacity, and we are on the path of doing so. But we, when we look at 8% of the target or expected 5 million tons of graphite, that's quite much more than this. This is what led us to look at, you know, other alternative resources. 
that we can put under our belt and use it to grow our ultimate capacities, aligning with our thought of 8% of global consumption. Mozambique has been an established jurisdiction for graphite. The project that we identified, I have personally been monitoring that project for almost more than four years. The, the owners of that project have very prudently deciphered a huge resource around it. 150 plus tons of established resource and reserves is not a small quantum of reserves. It's almost six times of what we have in Madagascar. In addition, it is a higher grade resource. Yes, Madagascar resources have its advantages, but this also has certain other advantages. So we found this as a fantastic asset to have it under our belt. Our target also was for us to mitigate our country risk. Being in two countries would be more helpful in being in one. Having two types of graphite resources would be more helpful than having one type. So many things. The approval for transfer of this asset requires a ministerial approval in country in Mozambique. Both parties to this acquisition, ourselves and Battery Minerals, are relentlessly working to complete that. I can say that the commitment by both parties in completing this is strong and will remain strong. We continue to coordinate and I see this completing in the near future. What does this give us? It gives us the ability to possibly go to 300, 400,000 tons of graphite capacity by end of this decade. So it is a very value accretive deal again for our company. And we are continuously engaged to complete it. Uh, could we go to the next slide, Purvi? Uh, are there? Okay, so that brings me uh, to the end of our uh, update as of now from uh, uh, taking leads from uh, various questions that had come to us. Uh, can I hand over back to Paul? Oh, fantastic. To thank you. Thank you very much indeed for the update, Shishi, and thank you indeed for that presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab just situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. But just while the team take a few moments to review those questions submitted today, I'd like to remind you the recording of the presentation, along with a copy of the slides in the published Q&A, can be accessed via your dashboard. Shishi Peruvi, um, as you can see, we've had a number of questions come through today. If I may, can I just ask you just to click on that Q&A tab sir, and just um, read out the question where appropriate to do so and give your response. Thank you. Oh, thanks a lot, Paul. So uh, let, me, let me start with the first question on a guidance in relation to OPEX with respect to our Madagascan operations as we reach 12 and 30,000 tons. It is true that there has been a change in the economic, uh, macroeconomic situation globally, which has happened for reasons that we all know about. Two significant impacts for us is that the cost of fuel has increased substantially. And second is that steel has really firmed up. In addition to this, there are uh, others, including cost of shipping, etc. While we continue to fight with these cost increases, the steps that we are taking are multiple to mitigate our increase in costs. The information that I uh, shared with respect to the pre-concentrate and concentrate book will have a significant impact on us. We are starting our first hydropower plant commissioning of which is in process right now. The key components of cost for us are fuel, human resources, logistics, and, you know, just aids in production. We will mitigate our cost of increased fuel with the innovations that we do in our uh, 
operations. Our human resource cost per ton would continue to reduce as we evolve to higher productions. All this put together, we do expect that we'll continue to maintain in due course as we ramp up our production, the margins that we have intended to. On the other side, we're also pushing up uh, our pricing in relation to uh, cost of uh, uh, sea freights. So that is being passed on to customers. Wherever opportune, while we have annual contracts with certain customers, we do have opportunity of, at spot markets. We are using that to increase the realization per ton of our graphite. Thus, as you would have seen in a, a recent update that we made, we reached more or less $860 per ton of graphite sales, which is uh, quite significant if you compare with uh, any other graphite producers that you can find. I think uh, possibly this gives leads to answers. Uh, I'm sorry, I won't give specific numbers on this, but you can rest assured that the company will remain conscious to maintain its margins. There is a question on, is there a plan of taking TGR private? This is something that is beyond my thoughts. I'm a small and scale entrepreneur. TGR is something which is the cusp of our professional life. Remaining public has innumerable advantages, innumerable. Where we are, we are because we are a public company. Our journey is not a short one. Our intent of growth, our desire to develop is huge. If we are not engaged with capital markets, how do you think we will be able to do that? Yes, you know, we have a company that has solid fundamentals of earnings, but it's not uh, something that can replace your need of engagement to capital markets. On the other side, it is capital markets that can create values. Please rest assured, this is beyond our thinking. Forget any plans. Uh, the next question is related to how we qualify with battery manufacturers. As I have said previously, we are engaged with various automobile companies, manufacturers of batteries, and even manufacturers of anode material for the batteries. Our engagements are diverse around the globe. Our intent is not to sign a non-binding MOU with a big name. Our intent is to develop strong relationships with end users of graphite, and that's what we are doing. As these relationships evolve, we will share with the markets, and we have the ability to deliver what they need. That's what the experience that we as a team have gives this company in background. Uh, the next question, how has the demand been for graphite and graphene evolved with the current global situation? Let me first come on graphite. The battery sector is estimated to grow in the range of plus of 30%. There are innumerable reports on this. Graphite is the largest, single largest constituent in battery, in the lithium ion battery. While there have been other battery materials, which have been in more focus than graphite has been historically, as the EV volumes are evolving, because graphite is an established material, had capacity worldwide, there were some spare capacities in China, there was no crunch like developed with other materials in graphite in history. But in the recent past, 
we see the gap between demand and supply evolving in graphite. That has seen some positive pressure on price of graphite. The forecasts say that the graphite consumption globally would reach anywhere between five to mil six million tons uh, annually. Even if you remain conservative, possibly a million tons less. So there is no doubt that there is an upside in the demand of graphite. And as a globe, we are currently producing sub of 1.5 million tons. So the globe does need a lot of graphite for meeting its green energy targets. As far as graphene is concerned, the evolution of graphene is also now reaching commercialization stage. The biggest bottleneck that remains are still two. One, scaling up of capacities. Is there a process that can scale up capacities? Two, what is a commercially feasible price for applications and can graphene be available at that? These two are also substantially conquered and we are very deeply involved and will continue to be. There is a question in relation to the aluminum graphene composite, uh, which we announced last year. Advanced materials are a long drawn process. And that too, when you're trying to combine a metal with a non-metal. We have been continuously working around it and please expect us to provide some updates in due course. Uh, I, I missed this earlier, but there's a question in relation to TGR uh, funding TSG. The acquisition has not been able to complete. Without regulatory approval, TGR cannot invest in TSG. So we have not been able to provide any equity or debt funding to TSG, which was uh, the plan uh, post acquisition. We have used our resources to firm up our Madagascan uh, projects and the resources that we had have helped us mitigate various impacts on costs of building the projects. We still remain the lowest capex graphite project builder. On TGR, selling graphite to TSG, Please rest assured that every transaction between TGR and TSG is made on arm's length basis. Uh, Purvi, have I missed any more questions, if you can see? No, I think mostly all covered. And uh, the pre-submitted questions, uh, uh, have we covered answers to most of them? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks a lot again for being a part of the TG story. We remain committed to our plans. We remain committed to our purpose. And we remain committed to building TGR into the company that we have envisioned. We will continue to progress. And as we do that, we will traverse every road bump that comes across us, using that as an opportunity to further evolve. Fantastic. There's a question in relation to our share price. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I am advised that as a company, we should not comment on the share price. Having said that, there has been a fall in our share price over the last year on a more or less continued basis. I'm not sure how I put my views across on that, uh, but uh, possibly it, it, there are uh, restrictions 
uh, on uh, my not being able to say. But if you heard me earlier, the company would never raise capital in equity at prices it doesn't find prudent. That is going to remain. Fantastic, Shishir. Thank you very much indeed for updating investors today and covering off all those questions. Of course, as Shishir said, any further questions that come through, the company will have the ability to review those and we'll post responses where appropriate to do so. They'll be available on the Investor Meet Company platform. Can I please ask investors not to close the session as you'll be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order the team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete and is greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Tirupati Graphite PLC, I'd like to thank you very much for attending today's presentation. That concludes today's session.